Welcome everybody. I'm Rowan Crockett, Grower Services Manager for our Northern Region. I'll be your host for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Ningen, Nevertire, Trangi, Tottenham and Trundle sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone. And while a lot of things haven't gone to plan this year, one positive has been the return of some decent rainfall to our region. As a result, we find ourselves on the doorstep of what looks like being the best harvest for a number of seasons. While it's an exciting time for the industry, there is also a lot riding on this crop and we are not underestimating the importance of getting this crop off to generate some badly needed cash flow for rural communities. This afternoon, you will hear updates on a variety of topics around delivering safely to your grain corp site this harvest. No doubt, some of the topics discussed will lead to further questions. You have probably noticed by now, this session is equipped with a chat feature and you are more than welcome to put forward a question at any time. We have left some time open at the end of the webinar to answer your questions uh, if, if there's anything that we don't feel we've covered off during the presentations. Given it's a busy time of year, I will aim to wrap up in under one hour. So please understand that we may not be able to drill down into too much site-specific detail. But if you do have any questions that don't get answered uh, on this webinar, you can expect a call from the appropriate person to discuss your query following the, the session today. To kick off our presentations this afternoon, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Robert Spurway, our Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, to say a few words. Good afternoon, Robert. Over to you. Good afternoon, Rowan, and thank you. And a special welcome and thank you to our growers that are on the call. We really appreciate you logging in. Uh, we would love to be out there more in person and having meetings, but of course, we're all having to adjust to the pandemic and like many others are uh, running these sorts of meetings in a digital format. Um, as Rowan said, though, it will give us the opportunity to share with you how we're preparing for harvest, uh, how much we're looking forward to partnering with you through the harvest and sharing the detail and how we're going to do that safely and importantly, efficiently. Uh, we are really mindful that the last uh, three years have been incredibly tough uh, for everyone in your community and including Grain Corp. So uh, we are delighted to see the condition of the crop that's in the ground and the confidence we have in a much better harvest and a much better year ahead for, for all of you. Um, as we prepare for that, we want to make sure that we are ready for it uh, and we're able to do it efficiently and safety, safely. And a lot of today's discussion is around what we've done to prepare for that, the changes you'll see at sites, uh, and how we'll make sure that despite the COVID restrictions, we're ready and available to make this year a huge success. Uh, we will be introducing uh, the region and some of the people you deal with on the sites. Uh, but first, I just wanted to make a few general comments. It's obviously been quite a big year for Grain Corp with the demerger of the malt business back in late March. Where that's relevant to you as growers is it's put us in a really strong position from a financial point of view. We're well funded and ready for the harvest. The other aspect of it is it means we're a very focused grains and oils business. So in my six months at Grain Corp, our main priority has been preparing for the harvest. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be here at a time when uh, the rain and the weather conditions over the last six or eight months have been pointing towards a much greater harvest. And uh, now we're nearly there. It's great that we've had that opportunity to uh, prepare and get ready. I've had an opportunity to meet a few of our growers out and about around New South Wales. I can't go too much further than that. I'm looking forward to meeting more of you in person as we get towards harvest and it's safer to travel. Um, in terms of the preparation, I said we're in a strong position. Just to give you some examples of what we have been doing, we opened up about 3,000 harvest casual positions across East Coast Australia. That labour is really important to making sure we've got the people to operate the sites, to meet with you, to exceed your expectations. It's great to see so much interest from returning casuals and people we've worked with before. Uh, indeed, we've had over 5,000 applications for those 3,000 roles. That's important because we're also managing to make sure we've got the right people 
in the right places, particularly with some restrictions on moving people between sites and especially across state borders at the moment. Even though we're seeing that going in the right direction, it's great to be prepared and have that flexibility. We've also invested significantly in equipment to prepare for the harvest. Uh, new tarpaulins, uh, dogs, uh, equipment on the sites generally, uh, both reconditioned equipment uh, from like the last time we used it um, in full, uh, more than three years ago now, uh, but also some new equipment that we've brought into the network. So looking forward to have that equipment available ready to use for you. Um, I just want to finish on a couple of comments around COVID-19. We've mentioned that it certainly changed the way all of us operate, I think, this year. Uh, but agriculture is in certainly very resilient and uh, Grain Corp is no different. We don't take that for granted, though. So a lot of the changes and the things you'll see are about how we make sure this harvest is efficient in terms of turnaround times um, on sites, but also safe. So limiting or reducing the interactions, using the technology we have like Crop Connect and Fastway so that we can make sure that uh, we can get through this harvest in a very efficient and very safe way uh, so that it works well for all of us and, uh, and you as our grower partners in particular. Um, the team this afternoon will talk about some of the details on that and what to expect. Uh, and as Rowan said, there will be plenty of time to ask general questions about how that will work. So. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm delighted to see the team so focused on this harvest uh, for you here at Grain Corp, and we look forward to sharing that this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate your words and, and looking forward to seeing you out and about in the region in the near future at an appropriate time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 2020 has certainly been a, a year of surprises, and I'm certain most would agree COVID-19 has been the biggest of them all. At Grain Corp, we're certainly taking the COVID situation very seriously. And I would now like to welcome our next guest, Luke Vanderwerf, Regional Operations Manager for Northern New South Wales, to share with us the plan his team have developed to ensure our customers and staff remain safe this harvest and our sites remain open for deliveries. Welcome, Luke. Thanks, Rowan. Um, good afternoon, all. Um, yeah, as Robert discussed, um, Grain Corp's been in the, the COVID area for the last couple of months, and I suppose um, well, our country facilities have been pretty quiet. We've had a pretty significant change in supply chain re reversing it this year, so a lot of our ports, um, a lot of our upcountry subs, parks, which a lot of you might be familiar with, Werris Creek, Moree, have been in a large outturn program um, dealing with COVID. So we, we've had to um, change our systems and Robert touched on Fastway. With that system in place for outturn, we've been able to um, eliminate a lot of the contract contacting um, contact at sites. Um, and that will, has set us up pretty well for harvest. So I'll go through today what it means for you as a grower delivering into a site. Um, and there has been some changes, um, but we think it will we know it will. It should protect you, our people, and ensure that our harvest is um, seamless. Um, one of the biggest changes that you will see at sites is that um, no longer are growers or truck drivers allowed in the sample stands or weigh bridges. Um, we have put a few procedures in place, and look, one way we will protect the sites is at the start when staff, staff or even contractors, visitors, whoever arrives on site, We'll start contract tracing um, from the beginning. So uh, one of the systems we have in place is uh, QR scanning, which most of you might be familiar with when you go into any club, pub or restaurant. Um, you scan the QR. Um, it takes about a minute to set that up at the start. And then from, from then on, as everyone arrives on site, it's about a 30-second um, scan. We'll have numerous QR scans set up around the site um, for people that don't have a smartphone, there will be a manual way to do it, but we're encouraging everyone to make sure that they download that app, have it ready, um, and we'll have a bit more comms for that as we go through. Um, the second change will be um, the use of delivery advice forms. This, again, is to protect um, employees and visitors to eliminate contact. So um, Grain Corp has now got a new delivery advice form, which you can either get in a paper version or a Word doc. Um, you pre-populate all your information. Um, key details like paddock, um, 
variety grade, um, whether it's been treated or not treated, um, and that then is passed on to the um, actual uh, sample stand, and then they will use that information to pre-populate. Um, there also is a change with the um, samples before harvest. If you're checking for your moisture and protein, um, we're asking that everyone um, turns up a site with that sample in a Ziploc bag with a grower uh, delivery advice um, form in it. Just drop, drop it at the sample stand. Um, you can either wait downstairs or leave. We'll contact you later um, with the results of that um, and we'll try and do it as quickly as possible. Again, this is just all to minimise the um, human to human contact at our sample stands and way bridges. Um, the next change again is uh, through Fastway and through our GT system is that there'll be no options to cash at Waybridge anymore or transfer to contract. Um, this can all be done via Crop Connect or calling uh, the Grow Hotline. Um, again, you still have live pricing at site, um, but this all, again is just to speed up the process and also to eliminate that time spent at the, the Waybridge where people are talking through windows. So. Um, Plenty of options there still to cash or transfer and contract and, and the grower service team are here to help. Um, and number four, the change is um, there'd be no uh, transfer of clipboard. So as a driver leaves the Waybridge now and goes to the unload point um, previously, they would have exchanged the clipboard between driver and, and hopper attendant. Um, we've now changed the actual uh, sample docket. It'll have big, bold, black writing, highlighting grade and location. I'll just visually look at that and the truck driver then keeps that in his truck. So again, just eliminating that person-to-person -person contact um, to ensure that sites are safe um, and we don't have a, 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 an issue on site at harvest time. Um, but again, it's all about harvest and making sure we can continue to operate in this environment. But that's all from me, Rahm. Um, Any questions? Thanks, Luke. Look, I, I guess it's um, it all, all sounds like a pretty similar process, just a, a few small changes. Do you do you have a view on whether it'll make any difference to, to truck turnaround times? Oh, look, I think it might actually speed up that sample stand to Waybridge. Like, we tend to see a lot of people congregating around the Waybridge, um, uh, queuing issues, and, again, the data getting in is, is slow because people walk up and have to drop the data off. If we can get the, the data up there quicker and the correct data, um, they can have most of that populated beforehand. And then again, as we go through to that Waybridge, the contract um, becomes an issue, wrong number, wrong contract. That, that tends to hold up that Waybridge regularly. Now it's just simple, bang, goes into warehouse and the truck goes past. So I'm confident I think it will actually potentially speed it up um, significantly at the Waybridge. Very good. I think think everyone would agree that's good news if, if that's the case. Uh, look, Luke, I guess my, my next questions are, are probably probably relate to questions I've heard over the, the last couple of weeks chatting with, with growers or, or drivers. Um, there, there are probably a few myths that, that have been floating around that I just probably my aim is to dispel those today. But the, the first one I'd put to you is is uh, someone has, has asked me whether... Uh, Grain Corp staff will be rolling tarps and, and opening tailgates this year to discourage drivers getting out of their truck. Is that the case? No, it's a it's a myth, mate. We'll we'll do, we won't be opening tailgates and we won't be rolling tarps back for growers. It's still a, a safety concern that we see, and, and again, worrying about our people. So that'll still be in the truck drivers' realm to do that. Um, and and look, you did mention grower samples before, but you you can confirm. Growers are still welcome to drop in a sample for testing prior to, to kicking off when we're not not dropping grower samples this year? No, nah, it still can do all that, but we're just asking again. It's about this um, minimising contact, so it's just um, the Ziploc bag with your grower delivery advice. To walk away from the sample stand um, and we'll contact you as soon as possible with your detail. Again, most of our sample stands have a little platform at the top. We've got to follow social distancing rules, 1.5, um, our holiday areas, you can have passing traffic, it's just get the people up there, get them gone, out of the way, safe, and then we'll call you with the detail. Yep. And um, as far as when my when my truck leaves site after tearing off, will, will the truck still receive a, a paper delivery docket so that drivers can get weights, et cetera? Yeah, it'll still be two dockets. There'll be the grower docket and the um, driver docket they can keep. So both parties still have a docket and a record of, of the transaction. Very good. And and the final one from me, Luke, is just you, you mentioned about the need for a delivery advice with, with each load. Uh, what what will happen if, if my truck turns up without one? Will you be sending me home? 
won't be sitting in home, but I'm hoping that as a group we can try and convince all the drivers this is the priority. Um, we will have spares on site um, ready from the go. Again, to speed up the process, we don't want to see a, a truck pull up with a sample stand, go, I haven't got a docket, walk back up, grab his paperwork, come back around. I'd suggest that he pulls to the side, um, he, he can walk to the stand, he can grab his docket, he can pull up out the front net, go to the Weybridge, um, and again, we'll have PDF versions that'll be able to send to any grower, any customer they like to have them pre-populated, um, but we will find a way to make sure that they can get hold of that. But again, it's for us as a group to make sure that all carriers are aware that this is probably the must for Grain Corp this year to make sure we have a, a seamless harvest um, and COVID safe. Very good. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate your time today. It sound, sounds like all, all pretty practical solutions to me. Uh, look, our next guest this afternoon is, is Sharon Medcalf, Area Manager for the Dubbo West Cluster of Sites. Um, and I'll, I'll, yeah, like I, Sharon has a few operational updates to, to share with us. Good afternoon, Sharon. Afternoon, Rowan. I guess to, to start off, it's it's been a, a pretty busy few months for you and your team. Do you want to just give us a bit of insight into to what's been happening in your region? Thanks, Rowan. Firstly, as Robert has done, I would just like to take the opportunity to welcome the growers who have taken the time to join our Dubbo West Grain Corp webinar today. We fully appreciate that your time is valuable, so thank you for taking the time to join in. Secondly, I also just would like to take the opportunity to recognise that our Dubbo West site managers, Beck, Tim, Robert, Mick and myself and our Grain Corp team fully understand the importance of this upcoming harvest as a critical step to multiple steps in your drought recovery. So with that in mind, we're very excited about this upcoming harvest and we're looking forward to being able to do the best that we can to help you through the harvest period. So Rowan, in terms of what we've been doing in the last couple of months in Dubbo West, we've been busy rebuilding our core with our permanent employees. We've been progressing through our harvest casual recruitment and we've also been working at our sites at Trangy, Nevertire, Ningen, Tottenham and Trundle to get them prepared for harvest. Fantastic. Thanks, Sharon. You mentioned rebuilding your, your core group of staff. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into to who that who's in the, the group now? Yep, thanks, Rowan. So with rebuilding our core in Dubbo West, we've seen a campaign to fill some of our vacancies in our permanent staff that just occurred naturally during the drought time. So we've had permanent employees returning to Tottenham and to Ningen, and we're also in the stage of finalising another permanent employee at our Nevertire site. We will have a couple of vacancies coming into this harvest, but we're confident that our harvest casuals will be there to support us and there will be some potential applicants coming from our harvest casuals to fill those roles. In Dubbo West, we have a great team of um, permanents that are led by four site managers, as mentioned before, Beck, Tim, Robert and Mick. So Beck, Robert and Mick were here in the 2016 harvest, so they're coming with us in this harvest period with plenty of knowledge and skill. And Tim is our new site manager at Ningen. He's been learning very quickly and he's going to be supported this harvest with returning workers and he's looking forward to supporting the Ningen growers through this harvest. So I'd just like to take this opportunity now to cross over to an introductory video with each of the site managers in Dubbo West. Hi, I'm Tim Gilmore, Grain Corp Manager here at Ningen. This year we'll be taking wheat and barley. Looking forward to having quick turnaround times. We'll have four drop-offs for wheat and two for barley. Um, harvest recruitment is going very well. We're nearly at full capacity for staffing. And, um, looking forward to getting, start seeing some grain come into site for the first time in quite a while. This year for opening hours, we're looking to run the site for 18 hours a day with two sh across two shifts. So starting at 6 a.m. and running through till midnight. Uh, we're more than happy to hear some grower feedback to see if we need to extend those hours if possible, depending on the season. If you have any questions moving forward, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Hi, it's Mick Evans here from Grain Corp Trangy. Um, this year at Trangy we're taking wheat, canola and barley with two mould grades of barley, Spartacus and Latrobe. Um, quite excited about the staff that are applied for positions at Trangy this year. I'm quite confident that we'll have two shifts uh, running 24 hours. And uh, anyone that has any questions, feel free to give me a call and looking forward to seeing you out the harvest. G'day everyone, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Robert Armstrong, I'm your local site manager here at Nevertire. Uh, been with Grain Corp now since 2015. 
uh, and looking forward to a great and big harvest, hopefully here at Nevertire this year. Uh, we were looking at taking wheat, canola as, as normal, plus a barley seg here. This barley seg will be a bar one seg for all your malting varieties that will still continue to go into uh, Trangy. So contact Mick Evans there at Trangy and he can help you out with all your malting varieties. Uh, we'll be looking to run similar shifts to what we did in 2016 uh, with the option to push out to 24 hours. Uh, staffing wise, we're doing very well, uh, onboarded a fair few staff so far and looking to onboard some more shortly. Um, but yeah, all in all, looking, looking to be a cracker of a harvest, uh, things are looking great around here and hopefully things are looking great at your property too. Um, and look forward to seeing you guys at harvest and let's get it in, let's get it off, let's get it cracking. Thanks guys. Hi, it's Beck Torton here. I'm your site manager for Trundle and Tottenham. So I just wanted to give you an update as we're getting closer to harvest, how the sites are looking. Uh, Tottenham, at this stage, we're looking at taking wheat, barley, being feed barley, and Spartacus malt barley. Uh, we have Todd Baker returning as the two IC, so that's great news. We also have returning casuals um, that have been here before, so with a big yield and the crop's looking so good. We're looking um, really good with numbers that we'll be looking at two shifts at Tottenham. Regarding Trundle, we've got uh, wheat, barley and canola bunkers will be running there alongside with our sheds. Numbers are looking good for Trundle, so we'll keep you updated as it gets closer as to hours and operating conditions, etc., like that. So if you have any concerns or questions, please feel free to give me a call on my mobile number or drop in and see us. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you at harvest time. Thanks, team. I get the impression everyone's pretty excited about the next couple of months. Um, Sharon, I, I guess you've, you've got a, a good core crew in place, I can see. Uh, what about your, your casual recruitment? How are you going there? Thanks, Rowan. So as touched on by my site managers, uh, we're progressing quite well there. So in respect to our harvest casual recruitment in the cluster, we have approximately 80% of our harvest casual roles being filled to date. So Beck, Tim, Robert and Mick have been working very hard to fill these positions with a strong campaign in our local communities to employ local people. So we understand that the pressure of the drought plus COVID-19 has impacted our local communities and we prefer to employ local staff to support these communicate communities where, where possible. Fantastic. Um, I guess the other one I was going to just touch on is communication, which is, is clearly key for, for both your planning and, and also to, to make sure growers understand what's going on. Can you just give us a feel for what information you'd like to hear from, from growers leading into and, and during harvest? And and I guess on the other side, how you'll be communicating key updates with, with growers throughout the harvest? Yes, so Rowan, in respect to communication, as you said, during the harvest period, it's key for information to go to our growers from us and our local sites, but also for our sites to receive information from our local growers as well. So the WS team will be communicating during the harvest period using our SMS system as we have in the past to communicate key contacts, including managers for our second shifts, and also our site operating hours. We'll also use this SMSing system to communicate short-term changes to sites operations due to potential weather events or a potential breakdown, for an example. You'll also be able to expect some communications to come through from our grower services team as well. Um, to help our sites prepare at harvest, it would be greatly appreciated if we can also have some feedback from our growers and if they can stay in contact with our site managers, just regarding how your crops are progressing your expected time frame for harvest to start. And it would be excellent to see some comms if you're thinking about getting the header out to get your first sample, just to give us the heads up from a labour planning perspective. As Luke mentioned in the COVID-19 piece, just as a reminder, when you're bringing your samples into any of the sites in Dubbo West, to bring it in in its Ziploc bag and to also have your grower delivery advice with you. We will have spares available if required. The last one I'd just also say, Rowan, in terms of communication, if you have any questions regarding permits or truck codes prior to this harvest, can I encourage you to get in contact with one of the site managers to be able to have discussions about those questions that you have so we can talk with our road compliance team just so we're able to have the answers for that prior to a truck arriving at the Waybridge during harvest. 
Thanks, Rowan. Great. Thanks, Sharon. I guess just on that topic, um, the Grain Harvest Management Scheme, has, has there been any changes to that this year? Yes, Rowan, there has been since um, we last had our harvests here in Dubbo West, there has been an update to the Grain Harvest Management Scheme. So the main differences are that the charity donation system no longer applies. So all grain delivered into the system goes against the growers' NGR. And that the second um, change has been that warning letters will be provided above all mass limits. And these warnings will go through to an email that's associated with your NGR and it will also be done through Crop Connect. So just a friendly reminder, if your email has changed, to take the time just to get that updated in the NGR system. Also, just to let you know, with the Grain Corp being able to participate in the harvest management scheme, there is a requirement for us to be able to report on daily deliveries to the heavy vehicle regulator in um, New South Wales. Rowan, I'd also like to just take the opportunity to touch on just a couple of questions that have come to us from our goers in respect to um, trucks as well during harvest. So we have been asked the question about access via AB triples at our sites. So I'd just like to let our growers know that AB triples are um, have access into our Nevertire, Ningen and Tottenham sites. And we have also been asked about our logbooks and there's been no change with our logbooks. So under the National Primary Producers um, Production Work Diary Exemption Notice, um, primary producers can drive 160 kilometres from their home base um, without having to do a logbook. So um, they're just some of the general questions we've been asked leading up to today's event. But in, again, if you have any questions in respect to truck codes uh, or access, please give your site manager a call. Thank you, Rowan. Fantastic. Thanks, Sharon. Appreciate your time today and, and good luck to you and the team for a, for a busy few months ahead. Uh, just before I, I welcome our next guest, I, I should just give you a quick reminder on the, the chat feature. Um, please do jump on and ask any questions if, if you do have them, and I'll, uh, I'll get to those once, once we're finished with our next guest. Um, now, it gives me great pleasure to, to welcome Jess Kirkpatrick, who's our grain marketer for, for the Dubbo West cluster. Uh, welcome, Jess. Thanks a lot, Roy. It's great to be here, and welcome to all our growers that have jumped on today. Um, Jess, I guess to, to start off with, it's, it's probably been a, a while since, since some people were, were delivering into to Grain Corp sites. Can you just give us a few ideas or a bit of a checklist on, on what growers should get, get covered off before harvest to be ready to go when they, they arrive at the site? No worries, Rowan. There's probably three key things that I'd encourage growers to just get organised and check in on before they get ready to deliver to their local site. The first thing is just to check your NGR details, as both Luke and Sharon touched on. It's really important that these are up to date so that we can communicate with you. So if you've changed bank details, uh, email addresses or phone numbers, please just get in touch with NGR to get those updated. The second thing is around Crop Connect. Um, as we mentioned, there's no cash at Weybridge function. So for you to be able to um, do a bit of self-service there, it's a good opportunity to check your old login details. And if you haven't signed up for Crop Connect before, you can just get in touch with our team and we can sort you out with a login. So that's uh, the first two. And the final one is those delivery advice forms. So just getting a copy of those, uh, printing a few out or pre-populating the electronic copy so that you're all ready to go when it comes to harvest. And if you don't have um, the capacity to print a lot of these documents, you can get in touch with your local site manager and they'll have a few copies on site as well. So we're all here to help to make sure that you're ready to go um, later on in the year. Very good. Thanks, Jess. Um, look, I, I guess we've put a fair bit of effort into trying to make ourselves a little easier to, to do business with in, in recent years. Can you just give us a a bit of an insight in, into why Grain Corp will be, be a, an easy place to do business this harvest? I think a couple of things that come to mind for that, Rowan, are firstly, we've transitioned to two-day payment. So uh, that's two-day payment from the day of title transfer. So that's really handy for a bit of cash flow in harvest. So that applies to any delivered um, site uh, contracts or cash prices, but also our delivered port options. So that's pretty handy. Um, and the other major thing that we've uh, changed since 16, 17, when most of you last would have delivered, is um, additional free, additional months free warehousing. So you'll now get the month of delivery plus two months free. So um, that's another tool that you can have up your sleeve 
before you get charged some storage and handling fees. Thanks, Rowan. Fantastic. Thanks, Jess. Uh, look, the, the next one, um, I guess, is, is just if, if uh, I haven't logged into to Crop Connect for a few years or indeed never logged in before, what can I expect to see there when I, when I log into my account? I think Crop Connect's a really powerful tool, Rowan, and it's something all growers should really look into coming into harvest. Um, from a stock management perspective, you can see all your dockets um, from each load. You can see where a truck is in the system. And then once you've found a um, cash price or a contract that you want to transfer to, you can manage that all yourself as well. So it's a really handy tool. The other thing too is it has a lot of accounting features around RCTIs and storage invoices. So it's sort of a one-stop shop for self-service from a grower perspective. And the other thing too is we have a grower services team that can help you with any questions you might have about how to utilise the tool. But I'd really recommend growers visit cropconnect.com.au to sign up and have a practice before harvest. Very good. And, and I guess the other one, we, we have Crop Connect, the other, the other one that uh, has been around for a little while, but, but maybe people haven't used in the past or, or are not familiar with, and, and that's Croptimizer. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into to Croptimizer, what it is and, and why, why it's beneficial for growers? Yeah, absolutely, Rowan. Croptimizer is our um, quality upgrade program that's applicable to wheat, barley and durum. And so essentially how it works is that there are three criteria that you have to qualify to be able to be eligible to have a load to be croptimised. So the first one is that the load has to be within a certain range for specific parameters around protein and screenings, for example, in wheat. The second one is that you have to have delivered the higher grade previously, which is what we call grower equity. And finally, the last one is uh, the stack uh, position at the site. So once those three traffic lights line up, um, you'll get a text message from our team uh, straight to your mobile phone saying you've got a load that's eligible and then you're able to give our grower services uh, hotline a call to process that upgrade. So that 1800 Grange number is a really key number to save in your phone. So it has to be done over the phone and um, they'll let you know what's eligible at that point in time. But uh, it's something just to keep an eye out for and it links back to making sure that your NGR details are up to date, that mobile phone numbers are correct so that you can really take the opportunity to crop demise at any point during harvest. Fantastic. Thanks, Jess. Appreciate your time and, and good luck with the, the harvest coming up. Uh, that concludes our presenters for this afternoon's session. Um, we, we do have a few minutes left for some questions, so uh, I, I might kick off with the first one. Um, and I, I might go to Luke for this one, um, and it is, can growers use their own delivery advice forms if they do match the same format or have the same information on them as, as uh, the Grain Corp form? Well, look, the, the preference is not. It you got to think again, we're trying to make this harvest as efficient as possible and as simple as possible. And again, sample stand staff, new, they're used to the, the way our, our template flows. So again, to populate information, push it through, um, I'd advise not doing that. And look, if one turns up with that, look, I'd say we'll supply them with Grain Corp um, uh, delivery advices. But yeah, again, think about we're, we're doing a couple of hundred trucks a day through the stand, the staff, we just want to have one standard format one process, so it just streamlines that whole site from end to end. Um, but again, yeah, look, saying no, we shouldn't be doing it, but yes, it's not going to stop the show if one turns up, but we'll probably be saying, please use our, our form going forward. And and if I had any questions about those forms, who's the best person to contact, Luke? Again, site manager, area manager, grower service team. There's, mu there's multiple people there that can help out with that. Very good. Thanks. Um, look, the, the next one, and it's very much on a similar theme, but I might go to, to Sharon. Will be, there be uh, spare copies available if, if for whatever reason I, I run out mid-harvest or, or I, I realise that at when, when the, the printer in town's shut that I've, I've run out of copies, will, will you have some available on site? Yes, Ro, on our sites at the sample stands, we will have spare copies of the grower delivery advice for people to be able to take a copy and fill it in. 
I'd probably go back to what's been recommended that uh, where possible, if you can pre-populate, do as much of it up front so that it's not something you are having to worry about at the last minute, but we will have them there available if needed. Very good. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, look, I think that concludes our, our questions for, for today's session. Um, so, yeah, look, we'd just like to uh, to encourage you, if, if you do have any questions following the, the session, please reach out to the appropriate people prior to harvest. Um, we will be sending out a, a contact list of all the, the applicable contacts for your cluster, site managers, area managers, grain marketers, et cetera. So watch your, your email inbox for, for that in the next day or two. Um, make sure you do update those contacts in your phone because most people have, have a few out-of-date contacts for Grain Corp in their phone still. Um, and that's about it from me. Thanks very much for attending. Wish everyone a safe and, and trouble-free harvest. Thank you.